Hmm? Ah. Oh. Everybody's journey is different. Everybody does business differently. Everybody learns differently. And just because you don't fit into a certain entrepreneurial box doesn't mean that you can't succeed in a different entrepreneurial adventure. Podcast Junkies, episode 148. Welcome back. I'm your host, Harry Duran. Did you enjoy last week's conversation with Scott Mulvaney, host of Live the Fuel? You're probably catching your breath after that conversation because he really kept the energy level high and it was fun to keep up with him. Uh, he's just an awesome guy. We met at MapCon. I was on his show, then he was on my show. It all happened within the span of a couple of weeks, and that's just the way Scott does things. So check that out if you haven't, ha- haven't had a chance to already, episode 147. If you are new to this podcast, then that's the that's how we roll. We just have find amazing people like Scott, like this week's guest, Annette Bone, and we, we go deep on podcasting and anything else that's on top of their mind. Uh, Annette is the host of the Dancepreneuring Studio. And in this conversation, we talk about how she got started on her entrepreneurial journey, why not letting self-doubt was going to stop her from trying new things like starting a podcast, and when she became aware of tapping into her own intuition. She talks about immersing yourself around talented people, which I am wholeheartedly a fan of, in order to elevate your own talent, and she explains why she thinks she was so self-conscious early on in her life. One of the things we have in common is that we both spoke at MapCon and we talk a little bit about the trepidation she felt before actually getting up on stage. All in all, super well-rounded conversation. I love her energy. I love her enthusiasm. I can't wait for you to listen. As always, full show notes available at podcastjunkies.com slash 148. Make sure you stay to the end of the episode where I reveal this week's retention hashtag. But for now, let's enjoy this conversation with Annette. So Annette Bone of the Dancepreneuring, host of the Dancepreneuring Studio podcast. Thank you for uh, trying this little experiment for me today <laughs> on Podcast Junkies. <laughs> it's always about experiments, right, Harry? Our lives are filled with interesting experiments. They are, I think. So for mm-hmm. for our listener, um, I, I'm not at 100% like uh, in terms of energy-wise, and I was talking to Annette pre-chat pre, pre-chat and so deciding whether to have this conversation this interview <laughs> or not because you know that I, I always want to bring the best to you as the listener and and have you experience like what it's like um to to bring joy to your day so i, I would never want to get the feeling that um, i'm doing i'm having the opposite effect but uh, i think in talking this through and the fact that everything happens for a reason i think maybe yes. we can we talk a little bit about this and and talk about um how Annette and I met, and uh, we'll take it from there and see what type of conversation we end up with. <laughs> yes, yes, I like the spont- the spontaneity factor. It's always a good thing. So for the uh, for the purposes of of our listener, that we met at MapCon. Yes. And interestingly enough, we we flew across the country to realize that we're neighbors here on the <laughs> west coast. <laughs> yes. It's crazy sometimes, like you where you meet people, and you're like, "Where do you live?" And you're like, "Oh, I live in like the same neighborhood as you do, or you know, or like the same town as you do." And so, uh, you live uh, where, where? What part of town again? In uh, Signal Hill, it's a part of Long Beach. Okay. So I always, yeah, I always just say L.A. because most people yeah. don't know. But yeah, so Signal Hill, Long Beach. Signal about, Hill, Long Beach. Yeah, about twenty minutes south of uh, LAX Airport. So we had a blast at uh, the. Joe's conference, and he's such a, yes. a great guy. I'm, I'm getting, I'm really becoming a fan of these smaller, intimate um, conferences, and I'm a big, I'm a fan of podcast movement. But there's something else that happens at these types of conferences that I think is pretty magical. It's just the intimacy of it, and I, I know he's going to expand it to two days. But I'm wondering what your experience has been like for you as far as conferences um, in general, and specifically about podcasting. It's a really great question, Harry. I've been to a number of business conferences on different business topics, self-development conferences. I enjoy all of them because I love learning. I love expanding my mind, being challenged. And um, MapCon actually was my first podcast conference two years ago. I had never been to a podcast conference. I was a little hesitant because it was across the country. Not that I didn't want to travel that far, but I just really didn't know much about it. But I'm so glad I went because I made some amazing contacts. And I do like the smaller intimate meetings because you get a chance to really interact with people on a deeper level. And I am really finding that the podcasting community is really 
so supportive in a very interesting way. And I love that we can connect regardless of the subject of our podcasts and that everybody has a really interesting story behind it. And um, every podcaster that I know personally, I absolutely love what they're doing. Even if I'm not interested in the subject matter or I don't know much about the subject matter, mm-hmm. I am I am so amazed at what people have been able to do with their passions in podcasting. And so can you talk a little bit about your your journey or, or maybe just because you did differentiate the fact that it was your first podcasting conference. So I'm curious what you've seen, because uh, I've had that experience as well, uh, when you go to a, a normal businessy conference and you go to a podcasting conference. Well, the normal businessy type conference, I've been to ones where there was speaker after speaker after speaker with the pitches of their program. And there is a place for that. And that's fine. And someone can find something that. And so that was my first exposure was seeing speaker after speaker, really short talks, but really a lot of time pitching their programs or their services. And then um, I've been to ones where they were so huge and I felt kind of lost in a way, I, I'm more of, I like the more intimate, one-on-one, maybe small group type mm-hmm. of interactions. That's just the way I am. I like to dive deeper into different things. But that's been my experience with them. Um, and I've also been to ones where there were even more than thousands of people and you're just kind of a face in a crowd and there's a speaker on stage and you're getting all hyped up. And there's and that's fine too. I love enthusiasm. I love energy. But um, with conferences and everything, I think that can only sustain you for so long. The motivation, the external motivation factor of it may propel you a little bit, but I think there's more, you have to have something to back that up. And that has a lot to do with your, you know, what your goals are, what you process internally in terms of how you're going to get to the next step. I think there's a lot more than just going to conference after conference after conference, thinking that your business is going to grow just by going to conferences and stuff. And I was part of a business model that taught that, that if you just go to the next conference, you'll move ahead. And if you just do this the way we do it, then this is going to happen for you. But Harry, that did not happen for me. <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. But um, anyway, so that's that's it kind of in a nutshell in terms of conferences. But I love MapCon. I love the people that I've met at MapCon. I love the podcasting community. And I'm looking forward to to going to more in the future. So, so I really enjoy it. Uh, so what what was taking you to those conferences? Was it more of an entrepreneurial thing or was it more of a business thing that you were at, you know, where you were in a company at the time and they were sending you there? Can you talk a little bit about, you know, p- turning the clock back a bit? Like, when did you start le- the entrepreneurial journey? Oh, well, my uh, family is actually entrepreneurial on my dad's side, but I was never taught it growing up. They taught me the opposite. Go get, Go to college, mm. get... Don't worry about what we're doing. It's hard. I mean, nothing, nothing with print. And I saw them work very hard and have a very successful retail business and have it go on for years. And actually, my grandfather, the way he started is he would sell candy door to door to Mm. support his family. And so I wasn't born at that time, but my dad told me this, you know, throughout the years. And I I had, I wish they documented stuff like this because I, I'm sure I could learn so many lessons from their experience of that, you know, bare bones of going door to door and that kind of thing. But um, I first got introduced to entrepreneurship through a a business model um, (laughs) that I learned so much from because um, it was pretty much like a business in a box, uh, network marketing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is it. I do this, then I can do all the things that they promise. And, you know, you get... It's interesting with these types of businesses because you 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 hope that yeah. a, even a tenth of what they said will work for you. And that's usually not the case, not because there's something wrong with you, but everybody's journey is different. Everybody does business differently. Everybody learns differently. And just because you don't fit into a certain entrepreneurial box doesn't mean that you can't succeed in a different entrepreneurial adventure. But it took me a long time to realize that. And I kept holding on that, okay, they told me to do this. And I, I, I think that they have my best interests. But alas, that was not the case. Because if I had gotten out of the business, that would affect their income. Mm. Yeah. So it was a it was, you know, I, I really tried to ignore all the signs. And that was a fault on my part that I didn't stay true to myself that things were just not feeling right in that particular business model. So it took me a long, long time to get out of it. But what I did learn is I do love the self development part of it and bettering yourself and, and learning 
how to expand and get out of your comfort zone, even though I didn't always do that. I was, I was very much attracted to that, to the prin- to success principles that have been around for so many years. I was just in the wrong business model for me. And it just took me a long time hmm. to realize that. And um, fast forward to a homeschool conference. Of all places, I meet this entrepreneur who was holding a class for homeschool families about having a business that supports your family. And, you know, us being in Southern California, I walk into this and she has a picture of this cow on the screen. And I'm thinking, you know what? I am not a farmer girl. You know, I lived on an island, you know, and all this stuff. And I I like nature, but I'm not going to be a farmer. And like, (laughs) and I want to do entrepreneurial things, but I don't know if I I relate to what you're saying. Oh my goodness, this woman has been the biggest influence for me, the turning point for online business and marketing and all the things that I've been able to do Mm. because of her and what she's done for her family. She's big in the homeschooling community. She has a homeschooling group where she teaches families how to run businesses online in addition to educating your children at home. And she's, she was connected to all these people. And through her, I, she kind of just pushed me into the online world. Like, She just said, okay, you're going to do this, this, and this. I'm going to send you clients and you're going to figure it out. And I was like, okay. And I always been that kind of person though. It's like, if I don't know it, I'll figure it out somehow. And that's kind of been my whole life pretty much, whether it's in an entrepreneurial venture or not. But um, I was always about, okay, she trusts me enough. She thinks I'm tech. She thinks I'm technical just because I'm taking all these notes on Facebook ads. I was with her at a conference and she's like, you're really technical. I'm like, well, I do geek out on this stuff, but I'm just learning. And mm-hmm. so that's how it all started. And since then, I've been just fascinated with the online world and the potential of it and and uh, what what you can do in the online space that will support either. Do you hear that noise? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, sorry. It's the it's neighbor. Like a, oh, my gosh. It's your neighbor. What is he drilling? Yeah, we have new neighbors, so <laughs> so funny. That's oh okay, God. and we're leaving. And we're leaving that in, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. No, it's. I mean, it happens. I mean, I had to switch my podcast days to Thursdays and Fridays when I quickly realized that when or was reminded of the fact that Wednesday's trash day. So, oh. <laughs> you know, you have the truck going by, and I'm literally here in the house with the patio right outside. So the like the it's literally outside my door, and so you would hear it we're super loud. And I was like, okay, adjust Calendly so that Wednesdays don't show up anymore because it's oh. like. But it's funny because it's reality, and you know, our, our we had new neighbors, and they were hammering away, I guess, picture frames or something. You know, it's so crazy. <laughs> I get for me, it's like the dogs, the dogs Mm. barking outside and also like the loud motorcycles that love to drive by and set off alarms. You know, I know that happens in probably near Silver Lake where you live, too. But um, interesting, the joys of podcasting and not editing it out. But anyway, so, yeah, so with this whole online journey and learning and uh, getting connected with these people because of this one person, this one Mm. person that took the time to understand where I was coming from and uh, just believed in me enough and trusted me enough. And so I wanted to not only not disappoint her, and I was so excited about this whole new that, oh, I could do this. And I don't have to like, try to fit into this box of what these people say. And like, I'm valuable just as I am, just because I didn't do what they said. And they treat me differently based on my performance. And Mm -hmm. she didn't do that. It was like, I was so (laughs) that's so funny. (laughs) I was so happy, Harry. I felt so liberated in that whole transition. And then um, going into podcasting, I never thought in a million years that I would have a podcast that even want to do podcasting because I didn't like the sound of my voice. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I had anything important to say. I didn't know how I was going to combine any of my interests and like, well, who would listen to me? Because, Mm -hmm. and I know like you've talked about imposter syndrome and we've all experience that as entrepreneurs. Every day. Sure. You know, it's like, just when you think you have it handled, you're like, oh, but I think it's just kind of a testing thing too, to see, okay, where are you? Yeah. But different, there's different, you know? there's different levels of it. And di- yes. it, it comes at different times and in different things you do. Like when, just when you think you've mastered something like the universe is like, oh yeah, but you're not, you know, don't forget that you're not the expert in this thing either. So don't, don't get too, don't get too big <laughs> for your britches. <laughs> So yeah, with the podcasting thing, I thought, but then I thought, you know what? If I don't, I, I was, I already had so many regrets in my previous business journey and in my life and, and, um, giving up things that I love that I didn't want to have any more regrets. And okay. So I tried this podcasting thing. So it's, it flops. So what? At least I tried, at yeah. least I know, right. Other before it was like, 
oh, it's not going to be this. I'd always find reasons maybe that it, something wouldn't work. And just because of my whole self-confidence issues and self-deprecating issues, I, not that I wouldn't try, but I don't think I gave 100% in certain things because I was so self-absorbed. Instead of thinking, well, who could I help? Maybe my story can help somebody even, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's been a huge shift. And it's a lot of internal work that I had to do to get to this point. And there's still a lot I have to do. But now it's at the point where it's exciting. Yeah, It's not like, oh, my gosh, it's frustrating and, and I'm not enough. And I don't, you know, I don't have this. And I, yeah, OK, there are some realities of things. But I'm not going to spend my creative energy dwelling on those anymore. I'm going to spend my creative energy creating content, mm -hmm. seeing who else I can help, speaking to people and uplifting them, encouraging them, inspiring them that, hey, if I can <laughs> overcome a lot of this crap that I purposely put myself through, then... <laughs> That's it's almost this is like a comedy skit where you wonder just how, how noisy the neighbor can get. He's apparently drilling now, folks. So but we're gonna um, must we're gonna muster on. <laughs> yes. So anyway, podcasting has been uh such a serendipity. I've met some incredible people like yourself and yeah. other podcasters and it's opened the door for a lot of things and it's helped me overcome uh, my confidence issues mm. and and uh just oh it's just been Awesome. It's been such a great compliment to my life and I, I'm looking forward to exploring other areas of it as well. So that's been that's it that's it in a nutshell in, in terms nutshell. of business business and podcasting. What, what you can <laughs> do is nutshell. if he's if he's super noisy, you can just mute while I'm talking. That way we'll <laughs> at least Good point. keep it uh, down. But I was wondering because you said so many interesting things there and I was taking a couple of notes um and trying to think about all the different paths we could go down. I'm wondering this this idea of intuition is so important because I've been trying to tap into it and it's you know it's what's known as the sixth sense and it's I'm something that I I really feel like there's going to be a time in the future where it's going to be just like smelling tasting hearing seeing it's like oh I intuited it you know like and and it's normal like that was like something that people normal people do um, so I'm wondering when you started becoming aware that that was something you needed to start paying attention to. I started becoming more aware of that. It's always been there. I think it's always with us since be, since we're born. It's just in varying degrees. But I became more aware of it when I paid attention to it when I started dancing again. Mm. When I started honoring the fact that I was missing something so much after giving it up for so long. And uh, just that whole process and of going through the different phases of what I had to go through to get to this point. And I'm definitely not done yet. But I've... When I look back the, the last three, almost four years of getting back into something that I gave up for tw over 20 years, I'm like, wow, I could get a lot done in, <laughs> in a short amount of time if I have the right mindset, if I have the right approach. Yeah. And right meaning right for that, either that period of time, that season, right for um, whatever it is that I'm trying to achieve at that time. And that could be different for anybody. Mm -hmm. And I think honoring that process for me was huge because before it would be like, well, I'm not here that this person says I should be this by this time and I'm not. So that makes me less of a person. Mm. So it was a lot about honoring myself, giving myself grace that this is my journey. This is what it is. And there's a reason it happened the way it has happened. And it's quote unquote perfect the way that it's evolving yeah perfect in the way that's perfect for me and in, in what i'm supposed to do if that makes sense yeah um and obviously the, with, with because the the show is called the dance preneuring studio dance has been an important part of what the podcast is about and it, it did you have something that you were working on business related or consulting related previous to the actual podcast yes um there were a number of choreographers and dance studios that i was working on how I could help them. And, and most of it turned out to be website development and getting their, um, get just cleaning up their website stuff and, and their customer, co customer relations within the studio. And it's interesting working with artists because <laughs> some artists, because they don't quite understand the whole business process. They just, which I get it. I mean, I just, I personally just want to create, I want to go in yeah. the studio and just dance and spend, which, you know, when I, when I'm in the studio and I'm in either a workshop or multiple classes, time is like, there's no time for me. It's like, Oh, it's done. I'm done. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> you know, most of the time it's like that unless I'm really tired, but, but, um, it's been interesting. I've made a lot of great connections within the dance industry and I'm still, and 
quite frankly, Harry, I'm still trying to figure out if I want to focus on that demographic because it takes a certain mindset as an entrepreneur that you have to let go of certain beliefs just because mm-hmm. you think that it's, things are supposed to be done a certain way or you've seen it done a certain way. That might not be what's best for you. Just because this studio or this choreographer, or, that's not necessarily what might be best for you. And um, and maybe it's some it's it's a shortcoming on my part that I haven't communicated that well enough. But so I'm still I've worked with these people. I'm still working with a couple of these people. This is and this is before podcast, during podcast, now. But um, I'm finding that I'm also relating though to a lot of people that that have given up or think that it's too late, and then they hear my story and what I've been through, and they get hope again, which is, I'm really flattered. And it's really an honor for me. And um, I want to be able to speak to those people, because I know what it feels like to give up. I know what it feels like to think that, is this it? Mm. Is this all I have to give? Is this all I'm worth? Is this what I'm is this it? Am I just that kind of person where I'm just supposed to exist? And I'm not making an impact. And like what you had talked about, not having your voice heard, your message said, it's huge. It's really huge for me now. And it's been the process of uh, what I've gone through these last couple of years. So what was your introduction to dance? Oh, my gosh. I started dance when I was eight um, in mm. Texas, of all places, doing hula and Tahitian of yes. all places. You know, doesn't go right. Right. Texas, hula, Tahitian. But then I stopped. Um, actually, we moved to Hawaii. My family moved to Hawaii and I stopped. But I picked up roller skating and ice skating. So I was always into the like the movement artistic type thing. Yeah. And then when I moved to Guam, when my dad was stationed there, there wasn't a lot of dance at that time. So um when the, when a studio finally opened up, I, I started late with the, like the technical training stuff with jazz mm-hmm. and ballet about age 14, which is l- considered late for some people. And, uh, I just, I was so in love with it. I loved everything like learning the choreography, the conditioning and all that. But, um, my family really couldn't afford to have me in lessons regularly. So I ended up working at the studio in trade for dance lessons. Oh, so wow. I fi- yeah, I figured out how to make it work. <laughs> I yeah. didn't care that I had to sweep the floors or clean or I was there. I'm, I was so excited even just check like opening up the book, checking in the students. I was, you know, was this giddy teenager that that loved dance and yeah. all those things, you know, when you love something, you don't care. You just you're passionate about something, you do whatever it takes to to do it. So and then I went to, uh, when I turned 18, I moved out and I went, I came to UC Irvine to okay. go to college and study dance. And, um, that was who that talk about little fish in a big pond <laughs> because most of my peers were already trained since they were two, three, some of them working professionally. And wow. here I came in with very little training compared to them, but I, I felt like I worked hard in some cases In other cases I gave up too easily. And it, it was kind of a mixed bag that way because I was dealing with a lot of self-image issues. But I'm, I'm so thankful for being able to go to a school like that and learn from the teachers that I did. But um, I learned that, uh, that I gave up too easily at that time. And I was very much a, a victim mentality thinker. Mm-hmm. And I'm not proud of that, but that's the reality of it. But I mean, it, it, I imagine it came from life experiences and because you didn't have people around you that could show you that there was a different path. Yes, that's interesting you say that because when I was uh, in Guam and um, there was a lot of expectations because I'm I'm the oldest and uh, there's just this I grew up a very strict in a very strict Catholic background and there was a lot of pressure put on me to get the good grades and and no matter what I did it was never enough yep. like even when I was valedictorian in middle school and I was you know I did well in high school and I was. I, I really could have gone off the deep end. I thought, you know what? They, my parents should be glad that I didn't go, <laughs> go off and do something I could have. But um, yeah, it, there was a lot of pressure. And I knew I was always attracted to success principles. And like I find mm-hmm. these books. I don't yeah. know where I'd find these books with these positive sayings. And I thought, oh, my gosh, that sounds great. I love that. But I didn't know like how to. I, I just looked at it and thought it was cool. And I thought, OK, and then just kind of put it away. But. That's why I think mentorship is so important. Mm -hmm. I think, like what you say, surrounding yourself with the people that complement what it what it is that you want to do, and and then also challenge you too in 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 positive ways. That 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 not just that everything you do is great, but um, yeah, that was lacking a bit, and all of that was uh. So I'm thankful now for the associations that I have, and there's so much access. Even if you can't pay for coaching or mentorship, there is so much available that oh my gosh. 
there's no excuse now for you can have an online mentor, someone through a podcast, go to your local library, buy a course. I mean, it's there's no shortage of yeah. good mentorship. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah, I, was, I was thinking back to what you said about the power of dance. I'm a, my, my wife has like dabbled in and out of it. And, and every once in a while, she would take a class and she just finds like the energy and the positivity mm -hmm. and, and just the release. And just, you know, she's, she does kickboxing now. But I think I, I got to point her in your direction and see if there's maybe like a class or something or you can you can point her to or something. Oh, my gosh. Well, you guys live in Silver Lake. There's a place called The Sweat Spot if she okay. hasn't been there yet. It's yeah. a great place. I go there sometimes. They have some great classes there. Yeah. And then the other thing you said was um, around going to to be, and realizing you were the small fish, right? Uh, but yes. I, but there's this aspect of being around people who are doing bigger things. Um, a friend of mine, Jason Gaynard, says if you're the, the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Correct. And you need to, and you need to be around someone who's going to challenge you. And I'm wondering if that's if you were able to like elevate your game as a result of being around people like that. Well, I knew that if I stayed on Guam, that I wouldn't get the training that I got. And I, I knew, I thought I, I didn't want to, to me, it was like step, if I had stayed, cause I could have stayed and taught at the studio there, gone yeah. to the local university and I would have been fine. It would have been comfortable. But then I thought I, I can't, I want to do this and I want to do dance in an academic setting and I want to see what's out there. And mm -hmm. And so I'm so glad that I did. And I, I and even now with dance classes, I, I take all levels, all different kinds of styles. And if I am the best one in there, I know I'm in the wrong class. Mm, that's good. And so even if it's uncomfortable for me, like t going up to, you know, I'm in L.A. quite a lot, taking different classes at different studios. And I'm still kind of uncomfortable. But I always tell myself this is where I'm supposed to be because I can learn yeah. from people that are better than me. So, and now that you have the podcast as a platform, I'm wondering now those people that you've met, have you now started to have them on your show? Some of them, yes. Okay. Some of them have come through different connections. Um, they have to be of an entrepreneurial mindset or okay. in a in a leadership capacity. Yeah. There are people that I've met that their main goal in life is to be a backup dancer for an artist, which is fine, but that's not my, mm. that's not who I personally want to interview on my podcast. They're great people and they're sweet and kind, but um, I'm definitely for the artist entrepreneur, entrepreneur period. Yeah. I think anybody that ventures out and takes risks and is working hard toward what they're passionate about. Oh my gosh. I just, I love that. So what was the, what was the, the impulse? Like what was the, the, see now I've got a dog barking. So that just makes <laughs> things even better. Is it your dog? Harry? Yeah, yeah, it is. That's Disco. Regular oh, Disco. What a cute name. Yeah. Re Aww. Regular listeners will know him very well. <laughs> um, so, uh, um, I lost my train of thought there. No, I was thinking like, what was the, the, the moment when you were doing the coaching, the coaching and the consulting, working with these folks? Um, and then, you know, listen, I imagine you started listening to podcasts, but when did you realize like, I'm going to try this on my own? And, and w I, did you see like a, a, a need that wasn't being met? It should have been that way, mm -hmm. but actually what it was, it was a selfish thing. Like, okay, let me see if I can do this. Let me see if okay. I can combine dance and business on a platform that's not visual mm. because dance is so visual, yeah, right? Let me see if I can. And then also it was like, I want to give dancers, I want to give people in the dance world, whether they're product creators, artistic directors, studio owners, whatever, the people that I bring on, I want to give them another voice, another platform to express who they are and bring light to who they are and mm -hmm. promote them in whatever way I can my heart for the dancer and for the struggles I went through when I was in college thinking, what the heck am I going to do? I'm, I'm really afraid of this audition process. I would cry after auditions because I couldn't handle it mentally. And I just, I felt like I couldn't measure up and, and, uh, here I'm, I'm worried about money. I'm having this pressure from my family, what you're going to do, what, you know, why are you doing this, all this kind of stuff. And so my heart in, in doing the podcast is to bring, to do something for the dance community that, is different mm -hmm. with the that's not visual and uh, hopefully that can help them in some way. So that it was, it was kind of a selfish reason <laughs> to see, you know, a challenge. Let me see yeah. if I can do this, you know, especially with all the baggage I had mentally and in, you know, emotionally, let, let me see what, what I can overcome that way by doing this. It almost sounds like it's, it, it's become a bit therapeutic for you. Yes, it has. <laughs> As this call is for me. <laughs> <laughs> So. 
And that is why I am a fan of the Harry Duran. So, <laughs> <laughs> so did you? Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Like, did you know? Because sometimes you get on a call and you realize, like, you're having, you're working through an issue that, or a, or um, a limiting belief that you've had for a long time. So, what what do you want me to talk about on that? In terms of that, yeah, just as you, cause is there an episode that stands out or a conversation that stands out where you were just kind of thinking like this? This ended up being more than I thought it would be when you initially jumped on the call. Oh, wow. I, you know, I would say 99% of the conversations I've had on my podcast, I feel elated after, and I, I get so excited as they're talking about stuff. One of the guests I've had, he is um, an owner of a dance agency in London, hmm. and he more than it, he was really instrumental for me at the time I was interviewing him because I was just preparing for my first solo performance after 20 years of not dancing at all. Mm. Something that uh, my trainer at the time, she was, she pushed me, you know, she pushed me into, of, of course, it's my decision, but yeah. she's like, yeah, you're doing this. And I'm like, no, I got to lose 15 more pounds. And she's like, no, no, that you can't wait for things to be what you think is perfect. You got to do this now. It's time. So I'm like, Oh, well, no. And she's like, no, you got, <laughs> so you need those people that kind of push you. Of right. But, but he told me, you know, I, he was so, he was there for me in a way that I don't think he realized he was because of, um, he didn't know at the time. And then I told him that I'm prepping for this. And, um, he told me, I, and I still have it. I have a post-it on it that, uh, of what he told me. And he says, do my best in the moment. It's just me and the stage and no one else live in the story I'm telling. And mm. I have it on a post-it up on my board right now as I'm looking at it. And I look at it a lot, not just for my podcast interviews, but also for other things. And when I'm in a dance class, when I'm going on a show, <laughs> when I, you know, and it's been really instrumental. And, and because he said that, because he, he said that for me, what I was looking for something from him and he was, he took the time and he's just a kind, patient, vibrant soul. And he's just, He's so like alive and you know, dancers, there's so many dancers that are like that. And so that was really, that was, that's one guest I can point out that was instrumental during that time, during our conversation, mm -hmm. that it blessed me just as much as it, pro it blessed him to be for him, for me to promote him and for him to be on my show. I've had him twice actually. So, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to going to London to actually see him in person and um, train with him. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I don't know when that's going to be, but I'm like, I'm, I, I'm, it's a goal of mine, so I, I got to get there. But yeah, so that's one guess that I could point out that's been instrumental. How have you grown as a podcaster since starting your show? Oh, I don't dread the sound of my voice anymore. I can listen back to shows and not be like, oh my gosh, uh, I don't get as nervous mm -hmm. talking. Even inter before it was like, I don't know if I ever told you, Harry, that I would have to rehearse to order pizza over the phone. Oh my God. <laughs> like I would sweat. I would, my heart would start palpitating. I know it's so silly, right? I'd have to rehearse. Hi, my name is Annette. I want to order half cheese. And I mean, it's real. I'm like, I wow. was so self-conscious, Harry. So that's why I'm like me on a podcast speaking in public. It's just crazy. But then I'm thinking, you know what? If I can do it, <laughs> anybody can do it. So that's podcasting has helped me. Um, it gives me a creative outlet for my ideas and for finding people and and uh, network. It's it's just been it's opened up a whole new avenue of thinking and perspective and connection. And mm -hmm. it's been the thing that I never thought would have all these serendipities. Why do you think you're so self conscious early on? Oh gosh, because <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I be, Oh gosh, I just, I was always that way, just very inward and shy. And, and it, I think a lot of it had to do with being reprimanded a lot as a child, mm. being yeah. called names, the mental part of it. Yeah. And then also um, the perfectionistic attitude. What's your, on, what's your, what's your background? My cultural background? Yeah. Oh, I'm half Chamorro and half Korean. Half Chamorro? Chamorro, yes. What's Chamorro? There's, there's a group of islands in the Pacific. Uh, Guam is being is one of them, the U.S. Okay. territory. There's another territory uh, called the Commonwealth of the Marianas. There's a little island called Rhoda, which is where my dad's family is from. Wow. And so that whole part is there. If you talk to the people there, they call themselves Chamorro. Mm. So my dad was my dad's Chamorro, and my mom is Korean. That's fascinating. <laughs> 
So, yeah. Well, so. I hear a lot of stories about the the strictness of Korean parents, though. Oh yes. <laughs> That's a real thing. <laughs> it's a real thing, you know, but in, in that too, I've learned discipline yeah. and setting standards for myself. But at this point now, it's setting standards for myself for me, not for someone else. Mm. Not because I want to fit into what you think I should fit into or because you want me to be part of what you have going on for your benefit. I'm all for helping people. Yeah. Collaboration, serving people. I'm all for that. But there's that, uh, just from my experience, there's that fine line of, okay, I want to do this for you because I'm expecting something from you. Mm -hmm. And I've had a lot of people in my past do things for me and I'm so thankful, but it was, they always threw it back in my face. Mm. Oh, but I did this for you. How could you do this? Because all oh, after everything I've done for you. Ooh. You never want <laughs> to hear that because then you re immediately regret having like help them out in the first place or, yeah. or letting them help you if there was going to be with a string attached. Yeah. And that's why I tell like, even with my friends, I'm like, if you need a ride to the airport, ask me, I'm not expecting, you know, a friend of mine. He's like, well, I want to do this for you. I'm like, it's okay. I wanted, I, you're my friend and yeah. you needed help. So I'm going to do it for you. So stuff like that. I don't, you know, it's, it's just from my experience, it's just really been important that to, if you are going to have that heart of giving that there's no strings attached to it yeah. in that aspect, you know? That's, I mean, because the, the, yeah, the best kind is the one that that's um, with no strings attached, with no expectations, mm -hmm. and, and not expecting anything in return. Correct. Yeah, that's the. I think that's the best. Uh, you talked about homeschooling earlier too. Yes. What? Where's that interest come from? We were. Um, I was around a lot of families before I had my son. I, late. I was thirty-five. I'm forty-six mm -hmm. now, and. Um, I was around a lot of homeschooling families, and I was so impressed with the demeanor of the children. Granted, not all homeschooling kids are that way, but the ones I were, I was around, I was very impressed with their manners, mm. how advanced they were in their thinking. Not that they were, I don't want to say smarter, but they had a different perspective and the way that they approached. I love the fact of the flexibility mm -hmm. and that homework is an option. And I thought, you know, I would have loved to learn this way. I would have loved to have learning customized to the way I learn because not everybody learns the way that it's taught in the schools, whether it's private or public. That's not the point. It's some people learn better by audio. Some people learn better by touch. Can, some are kinesthetic learners. My son is kinesthetic. But in schools, they don't teach unless you're maybe doing a project and their, and their agenda is to try to get through the subjects as, as quick. Well, we know we went through yeah, reg yeah, yeah. regular school. It's getting through things, not retaining. And I would have loved to have a customized ed education and that's what I wanted for my son. So I'm very much a proponent of homeschooling because there's so many options available now and so much support and something that can work for any family. Doesn't matter your religious belief or and it has nothing to do with that. There's so much available and so much support. Sounds like a new podcast. <laughs> Actually, I do have an idea for a new podcast. Of course you do. I'll have, I'll have to run it by you and yeah. see what you think. <laughs> every podcaster has, it's almost like domain names. Like, <laughs> you know, every podcaster has like three or four other podcasts in their back pocket that they're just ready to launch and but they, the only thing that keeps them moving forward is the fact that they know how, how much hard work it is to do one very well. Yes. So, Yeah, and it's funny, Harry, because I never thought, I, I didn't think, I thought I'd just stick with the dance um, topic. But I'm like, ooh, I could maybe do this and have a co-host and we could talk about this. And mm -hmm. so I'm, yeah. it's really cool. So yeah, I well, never thought. I, I, I think, and this is what I found to be true, and, and let me confirm for me if, if this is the same case for you. I, I'm wondering, uh, you know, that you're up to 139 episodes, 37 episodes. Um, like, talk about the impact now, not oh, switching the focus away from you, but talk about the impact to the people who are listening and the people who have now commented and, you know, and who have talked about your show or mentioned something that you did or some conversation that you had or have been impacted by your podcast. Are you talking about like the comments that I get, the feedback yeah, the that I get? Yeah, feedback, feedback. Oh, it's interesting because one of my listeners, um, she's actually a stay-at-home mom. She's a friend of mine. And I'm surprised because like I don't expect my friends to listen to my <laughs> podcast. Like I don't, it's just not, you know, I don't, and and some of them do. And this one, she's a, she's not a dancer. She's a stay-at-home mom. She's a homeschooler. And she said, I really like how you talk about 
your experiences on Guam and your personal life and, and that kind of thing. And I thought that's really interesting that she likes me talking about that kind of stuff. I, yeah. And then I've had someone tell me, though, before I had a podcasting coach before who was actually in the radio business when I was starting out. And his viewpoint is very different because he yeah. comes from the radio business, not necessarily the podcasting business, although he's very, very accomplished in the radio business. And he's like, you need to get more personal. I'm like, I'm not getting personal enough. <laughs> you know. So it's interesting, that kind of feedback. Um, the, a lot of it I get is, gosh, I'm so inspired by your story. And I, I feel so honored because I'm like, I just chose to go back to what I love. And I just chose to put in the, the work that takes for me, it could be different for someone else that is going to get me to the next step. And, and I'm, enjoying the process and mm -hmm. learning so much through the process. And you can do the same thing. I'm thinking you can do the same thing. It's yeah. not, I'm, I'm just choosing to do these things and choosing to have a different perspective and outlook in approaching these different things. But to them, some of them, it, it looks like this monumental thing that I've overcome, which, you know, I am proud of myself, how far I've come and the, and more so the physical. Yeah. But I think more the internal spiritual mental changes or shifts that have happened, I'm more excited about because then I, I know there's more coming and there's always something new to learn. That's, that's great. And I think, um, you know, every, everyone is attracted to different aspects of you and your personality and your show. And I think it is this idea of becoming real. And, and that's why I, I, I for, almost all the time just leave this conversation as it's going because I think it's reassuring for podcasters and that's, you know, a lot of my audience is podcasters and they're like, oh, wow, like you didn't edit that out or you left that in or you, that second take. And so I was like, yeah, because, you know, we struggle with this as podcasters and, and, and if I can give them like a little uh, freedom or just a, like a ticket to say, hey, you don't have to get it right and, and people resonate with that. People, you know, a, a podcast listener is going to hear that and they're going to laugh, right? And they're going to be like, oh, it's this not, you know, if I want a perfect show, I'll go listen to NPR, I'll go listen to 99% Invisible, you know, or, or if I want to hear a perfect interview, I'll go listen to Terry Gross, you know, or Alec Baldwin or something like, yeah, so I can have something to strive for. But, you know, that's not what this show is. The show is just real genuine conversations with podcasters. And, you know, we, we gotta, I don't want to paint a picture that like everything is perfect and we're in a perfect environment and we're all in our like $3,000 padded studios. <laughs> Yeah, I look forward to having a 3000. I look forward to having like the setup that you have right now. You see me on my ATR 2100 microphone. And I think you saw the picture when I spoke at MapCon of the box that I use mm -hmm. with the foam and then of course going to the study rooms and the sound lab in the library. But you do what you know, I'm say this all the time, you do what you can with what you have. Yeah. And that's better than someone's well intentioned, perfect, ideal scenario that they haven't done yet. Yeah. And that sticks with me so much when I'm a, when I'm doing almost, I mean, even with dance too, I'm like, man, I didn't look good there, but at least I'm doing it. At least I'm putting myself out there. At least I'm growing, Yeah. you know, and same with podcasting too. I'm like, yeah, there's things I got to clean up. There's things I have to, my editing is not the best and I'm looking forward to outsourcing that very soon. And mm -hmm. I know that there's, I keep going back and forth on options. I just need to make a decision on that. Yeah. So. So it's, yeah, I really appreciate that, Harry, that you're keeping this quite real. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get more real than this. Oh, it needs a, oh, it needs a fire engine to go by. Yes. Uh, and ice cream truck. Oh, I was oh, an ice cream truck. truck. Good, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so can you, can you talk about uh, speaking publicly as well? Because that's something you did at MapCon. And is that something that's new? Is that something you're, you're working your way into? Or is that just one more fear you're trying to tackle? Ooh, all of the above. I actually spoke at MapCon the year before. Yeah. My, the first podcast conference, MapCon. The first time speaking publicly, MapCon. Okay. Except for, I mean, I don't think you can count like the speech that you give for to become fourth grate treasurer. I mean, that's probably <laughs> the last. Probably not. <laughs> but um, it was never my goal to be uh, to speak publicly because, as I've said, I hated the sound of my voice. I hated the way I looked. I didn't think that I could deliver whatever. I just, too much comparison, right? And um, then Joe asked me back to, to, and I was shocked. I was actually shocked that he asked me back. When I spoke at Mac, MapCon the first time, I, I, I thought I had it because I did all my preparations mm -hmm. beforehand, all the things that I do before anything that kind of gets me uncomfortable. And then when I sat there for, before the, for the person before me, I started feeling really, oh, yeah. really, you know. And then I got up there and I was just... 
I felt like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing, you know, all these things were running through my mind. I felt like my, um, I was out of breath yeah. and rushing through my words and I, 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 I'm reliving it now. I actually, as we're talking, <laughs> but then, um, when Joe asked me back, I was so honored and, um, for the long, for a while now, it's been hard for me to admit that I actually want to do this. Like I actually want to speak. So I am working into it. Mm -hmm. I've done a couple of dance workshops with a professional dancer friend of mine where she teaches dance and I talk about the things that I've been through and related to dance and all that kind of stuff. So it's a teaching interactive workshop that I, and it's a smaller setting. And so it's nice to have that interaction. So I've been doing a little bit of that, but um, yeah, I would, it is a goal of mine. It's a, it is also an, a, personal goal to conquer this, uh, you know, these, uh, self-limiting beliefs yeah. of you're not enough and what do you have to say? And okay, so it's another challenge. So bring it on, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's been, um, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I really actually enjoy this. This is really kind of cool because even through my, uh, imperfections and the icky parts of my story, someone can get encouraged. That's a really cool thing. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing how this unfolds and podcasting has opened this part up for me and I'm, I'm excited to see what's, uh, what's next on this. So yes, it is a goal of mine. It's a goal to conquer and it's something that I want to get better at. <laughs> All the above. Well, it's interesting because a lot of podcasters, since they, you know, they get their feet wet with podcasting and they get comfortable like speaking mm -hmm. on the air and speaking in public per se. And, and I think what happens is um, they get comfortable having conversations and, and I'm on the same journey. Like I'm sp I took speaker training earlier this year and really I'm looking to step it up a lot in 2018. And, and interesting, Joe's format is interesting because you speak for eight minutes and then, and then you know, nine times out of 10, he wants every speaker regardless to do that eight minutes first and then do, I think 30, it's the 30 minutes the next year, which I'm going to be doing at MapCon next year. So I, I really think it's a, it's a great opportunity I, and there's, I'm really appreciative for people like Joe who are just always, we have all these platforms, I think in the beginning when we're thinking as a speaker, like where can I speak? No one wants to hear me speak, I'm not that good. And, and I think we just need to reach out and the first place we reach out is our connections, our, like, and we're podcasters, so we reach out to podcasting com you know, conferences. I'm sure with dancing and maybe there's opportunities with your connections there, you can speak in front of that audience. Yes, uh, that is um, something I am exploring. I have all these other, well, I have this one goal which I, I can't really talk about on this session, but okay. you will find out about it. But there's a I, one thing I am focused on for the next couple of months. It, it is going to be the basis of a lot of content that I'm going to be creating, and I'm really excited about it. And I, I, and speaking will be a byproduct of going through this experience. So um, I'm a little hush hush about it, just because the details are a little. I mean, they're there, but anyway, it, so I'm really excited. But <laughs> I'm a big, I'm a big fan of open loops and keeping people uh, and cliffhangers. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, where where can people uh, is it, follow the story? Is it going to be on your podcast? Or are you going to talk about it on the podcast or Instagram? Yes. I, okay, in the podcast, yes, all over. Yeah, podcasts, okay. pretty much all over the place. But I'm I I know that it's going to fuel a lot of the content I create. I'm already s starting the process of it, and but I want I, I'm I've reluctantly had to cut out a lot of the conferences I want to attend in the mm -hmm. next couple of months because okay. I'm focused on this and yeah. I, cause I, I love conferences. I want to, I know you're set to go to a number of podcast conferences coming up in the I mean, next couple of months, yeah. but I'm like, Oh, I want to, but this is my goal for the next. And I got to focus on this one goal yeah, right now, it's Important, you know, so, but you'll see, you'll hear about it and it'll make sense. Okay, so yeah, so, <laughs> so so for the listeners, they you know you ha you'll have to subscribe to the Dancepreneuring Studio to follow along and and see when she breaks the news. <laughs> yes. Um. So I, I'm, I'm, we had just a couple other questions for you. Um, I'm wondering what's something that you've changed your mind about recently. Ooh, what I cha what I've changed my mind about recently? Yeah. Oh, if I really want to learn capoeira. Capoeira. That's that's I, interesting. I took a capoeira class last week, my first time. I've been fascinated by the form because yeah, it's dan too. it's dancey and it's athletic. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe it was the class, but I was like, you know, I I dance and I do yoga, but it requires a different aesthetic and a different focus. Um, and I think I might have done better in a beginner class because there were th there was terminology I didn't know. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know Portuguese. Mm-hmm. And each and then there was instruments and music at the end that I had to play, and I had no idea how to play it. And then the teacher had me recite these uh, Portuguese words that I didn't do very well at. <laughs> it's part of the tr- I guess it's part of the whole uh, practice. I didn't realize there was instruments as involved. <laughs> yeah, there's some cool instruments that are handmade, and it's the whole thing is really cool. But I thought. Maybe I should have come in at a beginner class and do I really want to, maybe I'll want to pursue this a little bit later. I wanted to find it. I'm very much a geek about different movement modalities. I love different types of movement, martial arts and different dance forms and different physical activity movement things, you know? So that's why I tried it. But um, now I'm thinking, do I want to pursue (laughs) this or not? So that's one thing I've changed my mind about for now. How do you go about making a decision like that? Because I know a lot of people maybe struggle not with this a specific example like this, but for something, it, and we can relate this to anything. Like, do I want to start the podcast? Do I want to pick up dance again? Do I want to, you know, go to open mic at comedy at the comedy <laughs> show? Like, you know, do I want to leave my job? So I'm, I'm, I'm curious. What is the thought process you're using just for this specific example, um, in helping you make that decision? I have to give credit to Brendan Burchard's um, matrix. There's mm-hmm. a matrix that he takes um, that he says, you want to make decision making easy on what you should do, as a, especially as an entrepreneur. You get all these projects and cool opportunities thrown at you. Take those things one by one and rate it from a scale of one to 10 with these particular questions. And if the score is 50 or less, you don't do it. Mm. So that's been really helpful. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think people need to go through that because there's there's the sense of like excitement. Um, I was mm-hmm. watching a, a webinar with my coach yesterday, uh, Taki Moore, and he's and there's a scale of like scared and excited. If you're completely scared, like you probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> um, but if you're completely excited, then there's too much emotion in it, and you're just you just sucked up into the emotion of like, well, this is going to be amazing. And, you know, so I think he said there needs to be like a healthy mix of like trepidation, apprehension, excitement, you know, like, like when I went, did my first skydive, I was like, well, I don't know about this. (laughs) Oh my (laughs) gosh. But it's, but it was enough to propel me forward. Or when I, when I decided to do enter the speak off at Advanced Reach, the the conference earlier this year, and it was 40 entrants and I made it to the the final 12. So it was exciting, you know, but man, that moment where I'm sitting outside about to audition because the f- it's first three minutes and then it's five minutes. So you got to give a three minute talk. And I was like, so terrified, so terrified. And, but there was a small part of me that said, you're so scared. And so that means this is exactly what you need, where you need to be right now. I was like, uh, okay. You know? <laughs> Cause it wasn't like pure, pure fear. Cause it's pure fear is like on the edge of a cliff and you're like, whoa, I don't want it. You literally back off, but it was fear. And it, there had to be, have been like a little mix of excitement there for me to to, to be moving towards it. Uh, and I'm wondering if you felt like it was the same for you. Oh, yes. You know, I felt that way, Harry, uh, before this last MapCon. I almost canceled because I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to help these people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's going to be, because you know, those there was there's some pretty influential podcasters in that yeah. room. Yeah. And I thought, what am I going to say? And, you know, just doubting myself again mm-hmm. and going through these emotions. But I thought, okay, this is a sign I have to do this because if I don't do this, then I'm going to regret it. Yeah. And that was, that's the thing too. the question of, am I going to regret it or am I going to be happy? Mm-hmm. And if I'm going to regret it, then I go through with it. If I'm going to be, or if I'm going to be relieved, then I don't. And so that just asking myself the right questions, taking decisions through that matrix has been, has helped a lot. Is that something that's publicly available? You know, I'm not sure if it is, but if it isn't, I'm, I'll be more than happy to send it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love <laughs> to put it in the show notes. I think it'll be helpful yeah. for some people to go through. Yeah, it's in his, um, it's, uh, he taught it at High Performance Academy okay. and uh, it's part of the booklet, but uh, yeah, it's okay. really easy, really yeah. quick and helpful. Uh, I, did, you, I, I, did you find when you went to MapCon that your preconceived notion of what these podcasters would be like, because they're all so, you know, you know, veterans and stuff like that, uh, I'm hoping you you got to see that they're just real people like you and me at the end of the day, right? After a day and a half with them. Yes, yes. And that's what I love about how intimate that conference is. I know Joe wants to grow it and he deserves to grow it. And there are people out there that need to to go who are interested in podcasting 
or who have even veteran podcasters can learn something mm -hmm. from, you know, everybody has yeah. something to teach, you know. But yeah, I the first one I was like, oh no. And a lot some of the people I didn't know, I knew that they were very well accomplished in the podcasting space. What I didn't know is how some how long some of them had been podcasting, mm -hmm. like even before podcasting was popular. Yeah. I thought, wow, that's pretty cool that they've stuck with it for so long. So I thought yeah, I was pretty impressed about and that. Kudos to them. They made it through the tough part tech technologically speaking and so they're mm -hmm. now they're reaping the benefits of having of being a veteran in the space and then being able to help other people who have those challenges yes yes definitely what's the one most misunderstood thing about you <laughs> misunderstood thing about me oh gosh harry why do you have to ask me a question like that <laughs> I don't know. Oh my goodness. Oh, that I'm maybe that I'm calm. Mm. <laughs> People think that I'm calm and collected and okay. and that's not always the case, but yeah. I think that's I get that for everybody. You know, the analogy that I like a lot when people talk about that that same feeling is the duck. Because the duck is on the pond and you're like, whoa, mm -hmm. look at that duck. He's so calm, so serene, so beautiful. But underneath his feet are moving like super fast. Yes. Yeah, I've had people tell me though. I've had people tell me, it's interesting, Harry, like, oh, I just feel this calmness and this grounding. And I'm like, you do? <laughs> In my mind, you do? <laughs> oh, from you? Yeah, from me. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. well, I'm like, at least I don't give them this frenetic, frantic yeah. energy that I feel. It's interesting with energies, Harry, like lately, I would say within the last two years, and maybe it's dance has gotten me more attuned to that mm -hmm. and where I'm at in my life. But I, I feel physically like energies, if they drain me with people, like it's a lot more tangible for me now than it has been ever. Or if it's, if there's something, it, it re I really feel it. It's really mm. interesting. Yeah. And I can't be, a, if it's frenetic or frantic or like draining, it's hard for me to be around that. Makes sense. And then I, and I'm thinking, well, if I'm recognizing that, maybe I'm like that for some people. I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, you're not all things for everyone. And I, right. I, I repeat this all the time. Uh, and, and just to think about the people that you want to repel from your podcast or your show or from your life because, you know, they don't resonate with you or they don't resonate with your message. You know, you, you can't be someone different to accommodate them. Right. And I'm really good with that. And it's really great. I feel really great that I can say that because for the longest time I wanted to be everything to everyone mm. because then I felt that that would mean that I'm someone valuable because mm -hmm. I was filling something for everyone and you just can't do that. Well, that, that's fantastic. I really appreciate you uh, sticking through this conversation. and uh, <laughs> I appreciate you putting up with that noise. My God. Well, I think it's so interesting because I think um, I, I was really, I, I really got the sense that there was some in good content that was going to come here. And as much as we could say we're going to re-record -re it, there's something about this moment in time. There's something about what, you know, things that I'm going through, things that you're going through and that mix, like that's never going to be replicated. You know, this mm -hmm. that moment in time of like where the energies are matching in order for us to generate the type of conversation like that we had today. Like we, if we could, if we spoke next week, it would be a completely different conversation. Like you may say something that would trigger a different thought for me and I would just like have just, uh, and that's a completely different um, outcome. Yes. And that's why I say like on podcasts, you could give the, the same host uh, or the same podcast host, the same, you, know, you could distribute the guest to different podcast hosts and all the, every episode would be, would be different because every host will bring in their life experience into the conversation and their skills as a, as a interviewer um, and just ideally get different things out of, out of the um the guests and that's always what i what i challenge uh the listener to do and and other podcast hosts to do to just kind of like have your own unique conversation with your guest yes and i i've really enjoyed this harry thank you so much i really appreciate this <laughs> hope yeah hopefully it was good for you as well <laughs> <laughs> it was i'm so thankful to be able to express and uh without judgment and yeah. without reservation and it's it's such a gift so thank you so much well, well and it's been an honor to to get to know you in such a short period of time and this I that's don't. why podcasting is so magical sometimes you just make instant connections with people and then we ran into each other at the airport again as we were heading home so yes. it was really cool yeah, it was. It was great. So where's the best place for folks to track you down? 
they can go to my site, AnnetteBone.com, A-N-N-E-T-T-B-O-N-E.com, or find me on Facebook, Annette Bone, or Dance Printering Studio. And I'm on Instagram and Twitter as Annette Bone. So I would love to connect. Yeah, you've got some really beautiful posts on Instagram. Um, Thank you. You dancing and very inspirational. So I definitely encourage folks to check that out as well. Thank you, Harry. Thanks for all you do. And uh, thanks for coming on. And uh, I appreciate you as a friend. I appreciate you too so much. Thank you. (laughs) Have a great day. You too. Thanks. So thanks to Annette for coming on the show. It is always appreciated when my podcast guests spend an hour of their time letting you know a little bit more about their backgrounds so they can motivate you with their stories. And no doubt, uh, Annette did not disappoint. I love the idea of revisiting a passion and in her case, dancing that, that she felt she had, uh, no more connection with. And I think it was just really nice and really inspirational to hear her tell that story. We are a proud member of podcast.com. Intro and outro music composed by Cedar and Soil at cedarsoil.com. Tune in next week for our conversation straight out of MapCon again with Clay Groves, host of the Fish Nerds podcast. If you made it this far, the retention hashtag you are looking for is hashtag dance Annette. And just keep in mind that Annette is spelled A-N-N-E-T-T. So it's dance Annette, the hashtag, and you can tag her at Annette Bone, A-N-N-E-T-T-B-O-N-E, and podcast underscore junkies. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter if you haven't already. It's the easiest way to get weekly episode updates. Head on over to podcastjunkies.com slash eight tools and download the free PDF of the eight tools I've used to launch Podcast Junkies updated for 2017. If you are already a member of the newsletter posse, then just head on over to podcastjunkies.com slash iTunes and leave us an awesome five-star review. I'll give you the virtual high five straight over the airwaves because that's how I roll. Thank you so much for everything you do for the show. It is does not go unnoticed, even if I can't get the words out of my mouth. Have a fantastic day and a fantastic week.